Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Blessed be the kingdom, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And unto Amen. ages of ages. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter. I am Cheryl, worship leader here, where our mission is to build the church by developing fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Today we're grateful to have Pastor Tim with us uh, to worship and to preach and to preside. Today's worship is something we all do together, so you're invited to join in the congregational's part and sing the songs printed in the bold type in the service bulletin or program. Of course, everything is need needed is up on the screen as well. For those of you in radio land and cyberspace can access the order of service by going to our St. Peter's website, St. Peter St. Uh, Hallett's, pardon me, let me start over, <laughs> stpeterhallettsville.org, where you'll see on the side the online drop-down drop menu. Click on orders and you can download today's order of worship for your participation as you listen or watch on YouTube. Before we begin, allow me, as always, to draw your attention to these yellow strips on your, uh, in your bulletins. These are our connection cards to help us connect one another and to connect with God in our everyday lives. If you're a regular attender or a member, as always, please fill out uh, your name. And if you're a guest here today, welcome and thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship with you. We ask you to fill out as much information as you feel comfortable doing so. Later, we'll place these in the tall uh, connection box. Also, please note the blue prayer request cards in the bench in front of you. If we can be praying for you or someone that you love or know in a specific way, write it down on that space and also put it on, in the offering box. Today, we celebrate the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, here towards the end of the long green season of the church year cycle. In the gospel lesson today, we hear how Jerusalem religious leaders tried to trap Jesus with trick questions. First, they ask if God's people should pay taxes to an earthly tyrant like Caesar. <clears throat> As we hear God's word proclaimed and we join with our song and prayers, I invite you to quickly look at the back of your yellow connection card. You will see a simple next steps you can take after worship to offer your life to God today. Following worship, we have coffee and refreshments downstairs in the fellowship hall. And after that, learning time, kids have Sunday school, adults have Bible time with Pastor Tim. And it's not too late to turn in your stewardship commitment cards. On Halloween night, Tuesday, we have our annual trunk or treat in the north parking lot. We're looking for some decorated cars and plenty of candy. If you can help with trunk or treat, let us know and we'll be in touch. Don't overlook our upcoming semi-annual congressional meeting on Sunday, November 5th, following the 9 a.m. service. And we continue our annual collection of names of loved ones who have died in our faith for our All Saints Sunday celebration, particularly those who have died since the last time this, uh, this time last year. You're invited to share the names of your loved ones so that we may remember them by name in prayer as we give thanks to God for the work of his saints of all ages. Don't forget to check the announcements in the back of your bulletins or programs to learn more about what's going on here at St. Peter, including quarterly blood drive. Now let's take our first step together with our first song. God is here as we, your people, Need to offer praise and prayer. May we find in full measure what it is in Christ we share. Here as in the world around us, our varied skills and arts wait the coming of the Spirit. 
spirit into open minds and hearts. Here are symbols to remind us of our lifelong need of grace. Here are table, font, and pulpit. Here the cross has said. Here in honesty of preaching, here in silence as in speech, here in newness and renewal, God the Spirit comes to me. Here our children find a welcome, here the shepherd's flock and here as bread and wine are taken, Christ sustains us as of old. Here the servants of the servant seek in worship to explore what it means in daily living to believe and to adore. Lord of all of church and kingdom, in an age of change and doubt, keep us faithful to the gospel, help us work your purpose out. Here in this day's dedication, all we have That hymn began, God is here. That will continue throughout our worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets can be hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit to the end that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sins, Almighty God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our <laughs> sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are born captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus the Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The mercy of Almighty God, Jesus the Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I declare that all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our next steps weekly memory verse is Philippians 2, 15, 16. Shine like stars in the world, holding fast to the word of life. First reading is from Isaiah 45. Thus say the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wealth and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Response and meditation from Psalms 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord <clears throat> all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. 
Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Second reading is from 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, Timothy, to the church of Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before God and our Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfast fastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of person we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all of the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but in every place your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us, what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? And they answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. And they left him and went away. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to you, O Christ. <coughs> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Satan should buffet, no trials should come. Let this blessed. 
rest assurance can troll that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. He lives for the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Lord, hasten the day when our faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. A beautiful hymn. Please be seated. Well, Pastor Jared entitled today's sermon, Hassled by the Man. Thank you very much. <laughs> now his point, based on the Isaiah story concerning Cyrus, of whom God says, I called you by your name, I surname you, though you do not know me. It's intended to challenge us to realize that God exercises his reign, his rule, his judgment, his direction through earthly, here even non-believer, governance. Not a bad message for us in this day and age with the war going on, in the, far, in the Middle East, with all the turmoil that surrounds us, to be reminded that God is in charge. He is ruling even through non-believers. I got to pondering this whole notion and uh, realized I need to begin this sermon with a confession. Don't you say a word. <laughs> As a pastor, one of the pressures we feel from congregational members is worship attendance. When people are here, they're all happy with us, and when people are not here, they're unhappy with us, like we have anything to do with it, right? So, you ask questions of yourself. How many are present? Are we growing? Are we shrinking? Why are some folks here every Sunday and some folks only one? or two, or three Sundays a month. Or, and then you wonder why are they absent, and you begin to speculate on the possibilities. And those questions, running through the heart and mind of your average pastor, and all of us are guilty of it, can be dangerous. Really can. And so I confess to you that I was guilty of that in my ministry. I've gotten older now, and retired, so I don't have to worry about it so much. <laughs> but I ask for your forgiveness for that judgment from the pastoral office on what you or what congregational folk are doing or not doing. That's way above our pay grade. God is in charge. I was functioning like the man. I was Cyrus, exercising judgment over the flock, and that was way above my pay grade, so shame on me. 
But I want to shift our gears a little bit then and ask a different question. Why are we here? I'm not trying to be trite. I'm not trying to be flippant. I'm not trying to absolve myself or make excuses. Rather, I want to shift the question so that we begin to ponder why, in fact, we are here on any given Sunday morning. What is it that brings you to St. Peter's today, at this particular time? Habit? Yeah. Friends? Duty? Yeah. Sense of pastoral pressure? <laughs> Family pressure? Or is there something more? Okay. My suspicion is most of us haven't thought all that deeply about that, and I want to offer you a more profound reason why you are here. To make the point of God's judgment, of God's omnipotence in, in a whole different way, to take it in a whole different direction, I want to focus on a singular phrase from the Thessalonian text this morning. Were you listening? Paul wrote, For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that He has chosen you. That's why you're here. You didn't make a decision. God chose you. Now let that sink in for a moment. Let that sink in. God has chosen you. Just as we began in the hymn, God is here, you're here because God has chosen you. Now let's ponder that judgment of God, so to speak, and the profound ramifications of that simple phrase. And to do so, I'd like to take you back to the onset of St. Luke's Gospel. At Jesus' baptism, St. Luke has God declaring the following sentence. You're familiar with it. You are my son, my beloved one, in whom I am well pleased. Addressed to Jesus. And immediately following that, magnificent heavenly announcement, St. Luke, in a marvelous literary flourish, says, And Jesus, when beginning his ministry, was about 30 years of age, being a son, as it was supposed, of Joseph, of Heli, of Mathat, of, 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 etc., 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 etc. Being a son, it was supposed, of all those ofs, means they're excluded. It's a literary flourish. It declares Jesus is the son of only the last name in the list. Guess whose name that is? God. Jesus is the son of God. Well, if Jesus is the son of God, then he becomes the, the, the norm or the measure by which all children of God can be known. If you want to know what a child of God looks like, look at Jesus. But now, ponder this. In the waters of holy baptism, you became a child of God. You want to know what a child of God looks like? Look in a mirror. That's a child of God. Look around at one another. These are children of God. Whew. God has chosen you. Early Christians talked about baptism being in, in comparison to being grafted into the body of Christ. Just as a farmer grafts a twig into a tree and it begins to thrive on the nourishment from the tree. The twig in itself couldn't stand by itself. So also we in holy baptism are grafted into the body of Christ. Therefore we no longer live, but it is our life being nourished by him. Every breath we take, every step we make, its source is in Jesus. And I'm here this morning to simply remind you of that awesome and frightening fact. He has chosen you. 
And you are the face of God in your daily life. Whether you're aware of it or not, it's beside the point. God is promised to live through you in all of the ways that you live. Up, down, bad, good, whatever. All the power necessary to live your life is being poured out into you to face life, live life, and live beyond life into eternity is because of one simple reality. God has chosen you. Not the pastor. Not a series of pastors. Not your fellow parishioners. Not your, even your mom and dad, for that matter. Or your grandparents. But God has chosen you, made you his, and has promised to live in and through you. Now, every pastor has heard this from a ton of parishioners. I sure have. Pastor, you know, I don't think a person really needs to go to church to be a Christian. I mean, I, I, can, I worship out in the woods, in the deer stand. <laughs> heard that one a lot. Sure, I tell them. But then I'll ask them a question. Uh, do you carry a picture of your spouse in your wallet or on these days on your phone? Well, sure. I love my spouse very much. Then I say, well, when you're separated from your spouse, uh, do you still love them? Do they still love you? Oh, well, yeah, sure, no problem. But I'll press them a little bit. Well, how do you know? If you wish to communicate your love, do you talk to the picture or do you hug your phone? <laughs> and they said, don't be silly really show love, I'd have to be with them. Take them in my arms, tell them how much I love them, and hear from them how much they love me, and everybody knows that. And I said precisely, everybody knows that. And you can see it coming, can't you? Because that's precisely what worship is all about. He who chose you is here present to say to you, yet again, through his own body and blood, I love you, I've chosen you, I'm nourishing you, I'm living in you. This is my body, broken for you. This is my blood, shed for you. In the infinite wisdom and grace of Almighty God, he has given us a place where he declares his baptismal love for us over and over and over and over and over again, lest we doubt, forget that he has chosen us. The Son of God, Jesus the Christ, invades our lives every time the community gathers at his table so that we, children of God, may be faithfully fed, nourished, in order to live each and every day with his power flowing through us, living as he lives, serving as he serves, forgiving as he forgives, loving as he loves. What's this have to do with God's judgment? Well, he made a judgment regarding you. He chose you because for him, for him, we are his life or death matter. I know why I'm here. How about you? Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will will come come again again in glory to judge judge the living living and the dead, dead. and his kingdom will have no end. We We believe believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for the world, the church, and one another. Thank you, dear Lord, for creating us in the image and likeness of your beloved Son. Thank you for making us his image bearers to a world seduced by idols, pretenders, and fakes. Give us a double portion of your Spirit so we constantly honor and serve Jesus and show him to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Imprint Jesus' blessed image upon the church. Conform its worship, teaching, fellowship, and outreach to his likeness. By faithful preaching of your word and through right administration, your sacraments, use your church to lead many people from vain idols to life-giving trust in you, the true and only God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our fellow Christians who suffer persecution because they refuse to render to anyone or anything the true worship that is due to you alone. By their faithful witness, lead their enemies to repentance and amendment of life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help this congregation to give you all honor, glory, worship, and praise. We pray for our mission to develop fully devoted followers of Jesus, to support Solid Rock, our mission in action, and that you send us adults for baptism. Help us to give one another kindness, forgiveness, and compassion, and help us to give our neighbors love respect and justice lord in your mercy hear our prayer prayer. sometimes we who bear christ's name display such a blurred and distorted image of him that others are scandalized and dismayed forgive and sanctify us make jesus's love mercy love and mercy shine clear and bright in our lives to his glory and for the sake of those he came to save Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. Until your peace reigns undisturbed throughout the world, direct the thoughts, words, and actions of our military personnel, police, first responders, and all who risk their lives to bring safety and justice to others. Prosper all they do that serves your will. Bring healing to the wounded, hope to their families, and honor to all who have honorably served. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you anointed Cyrus to accomplish your will for captive Israel, we ask that you anoint the leaders of this and every nation upon earth. Equip them to do whatever accomplishes your will for all who are captives to injustice, poverty, or violence. Teach us to put our trust in you, to seek your will for the nation, and to live honorably, peaceably, and kindly with another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We plead on behalf of all who are afflicted by pain, turmoil, or any assault of the evil one. Today, we also pray for the country of Israel. Katie Marquez, Wes Blum, Karen and Daddy Her- Danny Harrell, Ray Makalek, Bobby Paxton, Michael Amaya, Norma Garcia, Darren Bickman, Margie Ringer, Russell Obelgoner, Gary Husser, Dorothea Garner, Jane Yamrick, Joe Cliff, Pam Christ, 
Briar Rose Nittles, Jimmy Brandt, Tina Chavas, Sacia Lamson, Betty Williams, Joshua Christ. With extended concerns for Sarah Serlick, Jim Smith, Cody Rice Jr., William Lane, Mary Esther Rios, Erwin Rath, Brandy Orsick, Payden Pruitt, Richard Chapman, Morgan Heck, Dylan McCord, Jeffrey Morgenstroth, Charlie Garman, Carrie Bessesny, Dwayne Dixon, Evelyn Lischinski, James Evans, Pastor John Schmidt and family missionaries in Ghana. Other concerns are first responders, Safe House Church, San Miguel, and Houston Omaro Lutheran Churches. President Biden, our country, and those facing unrest and unemployment. Come to their aid, restore them to wholeness of body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we entrust into your never-ending care our beloved dead. We pray for the families of Wyatt Hassel, Dot Adams, Lena Partita, Faye Batt, James Hill, Wesley Duncan, Mildred Bothell, Patricia, Patricia Volantine, Peggy Ashley, and Fred Chavanis. Continue in us the work begun in our baptism, which fashions us into the blessed likeness of your dear son. By your Holy Spirit, give us faith to commend ourselves, one another, and our whole lives to Christ our Lord. Bring us into your kingdom where we shall see him face to face. There let us see his image perfectly restored in the faces of everyone whom you have redeemed by his blood. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Jesus' sake, grant the fulfillment of all we ask that conforms to your holy will. Amen. The peace of the Lord who has chosen you be with you all. So with you. This is the time in our service to mention the offering. I'll direct you back to our webpage where you can learn about different ways to give your financial offerings. We know that all things belong to our powerful God. We bring these offerings of his gifts to us as we come to his table. God uses these offerings to strengthen us, particularly through the life and work of the congregation. And he sends us out to gather the world into his church to be fed with his bread of life. Now let us stand and sing together the offering song. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence. And give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through who Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth, and all the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son that whoever believes in him may not perish mm -hmm. but have eternal life. Having come into this world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and then he said to them, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again after supper, having taken the cup and having given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Be doing this in the remembrance of Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. 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 O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
The gifts of God for the people of God. broken for you the body of Christ broken amazing for you. grace how sweet the sound amazing love now flowing down from hands and feet that would Grace flows down and covers me. Body of Christ. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amazing love. Now flowing down from hand. That were nailed to the tree. His grace flows down and covers me. It covers me. Thank you. 
broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Keep you in the covenant of your baptism. Body of Christ broken for you. Glorify thy name in 
Now may the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood, which you have now received, strengthen you in his grace and preserve you unto life eternal. Amen. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your words have been fulfilled. My whole eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we dismiss, thank you for joining together today and on Radio Land and Cyberspace. One last time, I point you to our webpage, and under online drop menu, you'll, you'll see our worship videos, our sermon cast podcast page, and our blog with our study and share Bible study inserts. Please take a look at all of these. Each of them is a way for you to reflect on steadfastness, steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and help someone else experience the same. Father is making his face to shine on you and being gracious to you. The Father is looking at you with favor and is giving you his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.